Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Saratoga Racecourse. Some clouds, some sun right now. The temperature this afternoon will be around 80 degrees. The main track is fast. The turf courses are firm. Portable rail up on the melon at 12 feet and on the inner at 9 feet. And we have a jackpot carryover in the Empire Six of more than $304,000. We have a 10-race card. The first race is the 24th running of the Grade 1 A.P. Smithwick Memorial. And in the first race, scratch number one, Belisarius, scratch the one. A jockey change on number two, Prava Laguna to Bernard Dalton. Bernard Dalton rides the two. And note that number nine, Redition, will wear a hood. In today's second race, which starts the early pick five, scratch one, Hedy G, and four, Invest. Second race, scratch one and four. Race three will start the early pick four, and in the third race, all horses will be one pound over. Today's fourth race is the Statue of Liberty division of the New York Stallion Series, and in the fourth race, with the exception of number two, all horses will be two pounds over. The Empire Six starts in race number five. Note that number one, Joycey has pizzazz, is a Ridgeling. And these horses are one pound over, numbers one, two, five, six, seven, and eight. In the sixth race, a couple of scratches there, scratch two, wild love, and four, primacy. Scratch two and scratch four, and numbers six and seven are two pounds over. In today's seventh race, we have these scratches, scratch one, big Q, two, JC shooting star, scratch the seven, Kathy Naz, Eight, My Roxy Girl, and nine, Elegant Zip. Scratch one, two, seven, eight, nine, and number three is two pounds over. In today's eighth race, with the exception of the four, all horses will be one pound over. No changes in the ninth, and in today's tenth and final race, scratch number nine, mind the coin, scratch the nine, and number eight is two pounds over. Fast and firm here at Saratoga with a jackpot carryover in the Empire Six of more than $304,000. We'll come back at 12.30 to reprise the changes. First race post today, 12.50. Coming up next, the Thursday edition of Talking Horses.
For almost 150 years, the Saratoga name has been synonymous with the finest quality, sustainably sourced spring water available anywhere. Saratoga carries on the rich tradition of its forefathers by crafting each stunning blue glass bottle with the same attention to detail and care that has been its hallmark for generations. Visit saratogaspringwater.com today or ask for us by name at your local market or restaurant. Saratoga Spring Water. Make every day exquisite. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Talking Horses. Andy Serling, soon to be joined by Anthony Stabile. It is Thursday at Saratoga. Start out with the grade one AP Smithwick. Uh, apologies to everybody with Tom Law, some, some difficulties, and unfortunately, we'll talk about the jump race, and I'll show you Tom's picks, but uh, it'll be Anthony Stabile and I discussing the races, and you know the drill. Head over to Naira Bets. If you're not a member, no better time in the present. We'll match up to a $200 deposit. Use the promo code SPA, NairaBets.com, for much more information. Uh, we'll match up to $200. Also, a $2,000 hit and split in late pick five on Thursdays through the app. And that's today, Thursday, so another reason to join Naira Bets and participate in this. Also, I urge people to follow Naira Bets on Twitter and find out so many things going on, like the Sunday Saratoga con Contest. You can sign up, I believe, every week starting on Tuesday. All the information should be at naira.com backslash challenge. $250 buy-in, all cash prizes, prizes must play through Naira Bets. Also, all the action today from 1 to 6. We will bring you races 2 through 10 at Saratoga Live. We're on every day. Go to naira.com backslash Saratoga Live to get more information. And before we head into the flat races today, let's talk a little bit about the jump race today. Um, we'll put up Tom Law's picks, and we appreciate Tom giving us his picks and taking time out of his extraordinarily busy schedule. 5, 3, 4, 7 are his picks. Tom is trying to beat I um, was getting Muscato home, a horse who uh, won his last race to Temple Guafney down uh, out, out of town by 11 lengths. A horse for Jack Fisher who's obviously had enormous success in the jump races. Did want to show you Optimus Prime, though, going back, winning the New York Turf Riders two summers ago. And I, I remember this horse coming up, I believe, from Joe Clancy last year and how he missed the meet. And this is a very talented horse, Richard Hendricks training in Optimus Prime. Obviously, at his best, he's the horse to beat, and it was, we'll see how he does. And it's an ambitious spot, but I don't know what else he's eligible for. And we have seen these jump horses come back, Anthony, and win off extended layoffs. And the first time he ran in this country, it was right here taking this Turf Riders, uh, the New York Turf Riders. So it's not like he doesn't have experience off a layoff uh, running fresh here at Saratoga. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, we thank Tom for his picks and apologize for the uh, miscommunication. Better his this than morning. ours. <laughs> Five, three, four, <laughs> seven kicks it off. Race number two. Um, race number two, and of course, by the way, I want to mention Tom, of course, with the Sarah Special, and this is horseracing.com. We appreciate everything that he does, the Clancy's and so many others, now much work, and, uh, and appreciate everything they do. And check out this is horseracing.com on the net. Race number two. Big scratch in race number two. The one, Hetty G, is not the big scratch for Senator tomorrow. Invest, who I had tried to put on top in this race. End up, there's only so many changes I can make with the same horse on top, and that's Carthon. And we'll go back to Carthon's last race on February 22nd. A big drop down for Rudy Rodriguez, a horse that does have some trouble finding the winner's circle. Yeah, huge drop. Hasn't won in an awfully long time. In fact, he had to go all the way back to December of 2018, 12 starts ago when he got the money. That was going a flat mile. He doesn't have a lot of six furlong form. It was uh, in the Wayback Machine, this now six-year-old gelded son of Tapazar. He's, you know, it's been a steady diet of mile and mile and an eighth races. Uh, there's a seven furlong race thrown in there, and quite frankly, his seven furlong effort puts him right there today. He's cutting back. Like you said, the drop is obviously a huge Yeah, concern. let me talk a little bit about his talent sprinting. He actually is a talented sprinter, and I think that maybe the connect got a bit fooled by circumstance. This horse was in a maiden race, believe it or not, on Wood Memorial Day of 2000, 
2017 that was won by Bill DeSuit, the future steak winner in New York bread ranks. Um, and he was part of a monster, monster pace duel that completely fell apart. Bill DeSuit was disqualified, rightfully so, that day. Um, but Carthon actually ran very well, almost surviving the pace. I think finishing sixth, but only beaten a handful of lengths. And he has run well sprinting. And even though those races don't show, I think if you go back, there were a lot of trips. And one of the reasons I sort of latched on to Carthon was that he had trips in those sprint races. So I am not concerned with him going the distance. But, and he does have the speed to put himself in position. There isn't much speed. The speed is probably the two taken to scale who doesn't win frequently. And I do think, Anthony, we have to talk about the racetrack. Um, it has been very difficult to close on this dirt surface. Yes, and I, I not only do For I three believe straight days, it's races. been tough to close, I do think you want to be inside. I do feel like you want to be inside. And I don't know if they go hand in hand that you want to have some speed and you want to be inside. But I do feel like you want to be inside. Uh, and, yeah, I think you have to talk about it. There have been horses. Um, I, the the Kimmel Maiden winner yesterday, I think, was the best example. That horse was six to one. He was very, very hard to come he up with. He was extremely and hard he's to like just, on But he's just laying right on top right. of the pace. And both the two and seven were compromised by their lack of speed, and they and just that was weren't it. able to get the job done. That was it. That was it. I think that's the best example from yesterday because that was the kind of horse where he paid six to one. He paid fourteen dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if he would have paid sixty dollars because I, he was I, just really hard to just find. Just because you and I couldn't have a horse doesn't mean that others didn't find reason to play. Right. And that's the beauty of horse racing. But I agree. For me, that was a tough horse. He really hadn't been running well against lessers. And both the two and seven had run well enough against much, much better horses. And, you know, maybe it's, I don't know what the story is. And, and, and you know, it won't worry about it. And obviously the track has, you know, received enormous accolades and the safety rail, et cetera. But it's been hard for horses to make up ground. No, I don't no know how much, did we, did we get any kind of substantial rain yesterday until last night? We got some rain when I got home about, 6.30 it because rained, but it stopped know, raining pretty quickly. I was, I, a lot of guys and gals put out pictures of the, and videos of the racetrack and the horses training in the morning. Track looks to be like no, it didn't rain at all. No, the drainage yeah. system is remarkable and yeah. great. We've seen that in a couple of occasions. But we are not seeing horses, and a horse like Durkin's Call ran very well making up grounds. You know, Manifest Destiny, and you talk about the rail, that horse coming up the rail and, and winning and paying an enormous price, he was a tough horse to make on and paper. He's, he was never far from the lead. And right, he was, was on the rail. Smacked well, even the was second winner who made that move, but he stayed on the inside. Even in the last race, you know, the winner was well, the winner um, when it came was up the inside, the five, yeah. right? When it was following uh, and, Central Park, and, and the second horse was on the rail before angling out, and he did make a bit of a run. But we're not seeing, and some of it may be race dynamics, and some of it may be some of the results. But when you have a horse like Ma Manifest Destiny winning on the rail, being forwardly placed, I think it it asks, it begs the question if the track is helping these horses. Right, a bit. the maiden in the second, like you said, the horse in the second race is five to one. The Kimmel maiden six to one. Manifest Destiny pays ninety dollars. Uh, Manny Petty pays thirty dollars. These are all horses that are either forwardly placed or riding the and inside. And listen, I've been around a long, long time, even before you were born, and there was a time in the seventies where. Inside speed at Saratoga ruled. Yeah, it was the high and rail. Of course. Right. Sure. Um, I, even when I was a kid, but that's that the way it was. But that can and will change. I think one of the things that we see so often in New York racing are very fair tracks. I look at Belmont. There were a very smattering. There was that June 25th, the turf, when they took the rails down. But there was June 25th, I think, at Belmont. One of those days, there was a... That's like not a even a track, though. Speed. That's nature, right? It hasn't been run on. It's Well, I, it's I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't know the reasons for things happening. But uh, nonetheless, you know... Um. Yeah, unless there's a big washout or there's a there's a lot of rain that comes in, I think you just have to when you handicap these cards, you have to move up the speed horses a little bit. Oh, there's no way around it right now. Race number three. Um, oh, did we really finish this? We didn't really finish that, but the discussion. I just thought that this point with the scratches, the five or two are supposed to win. I apologize, guys. I really didn't finish the conversation. The horse that I don't really like in race two but can obviously win is the three horse. If we can go back to, I'm sorry, guys. That's, that's totally on me if we can go back to race two. If you can't, don't worry <coughs> about it, is wonder in in race two. Got the horse third. I, I, I don't know. I don't, tr I don't like this horse's race out of town. I, I know the figures make him look like a logical horse. He can be forward. I'm not a big fan. Yeah, I have him third. You have him third as well. What I do you like about Thomas Shelby? I, well, Thomas Shelby ran at the time against two against Preamble when Preamble was in good form, and the horses he ran against in his debut on the dirt. It was awful. At both uh, those yeah, races. just getting back to dirt. Leslie Ward chipping up an oddball face. Yeah, that's Maybe it. Maybe that's a possibility. Race number three. 
Um, Maidens. We are on the turf, and that's the good news. You know, there's a slight chance, some very late day stuff, but two days in a row, we may have been avoided it. I was talking to some guys earlier, and it was pouring down in Albany, but that's the way it is up here. It can be pouring here and gorgeous 10 minutes away. We've certainly seen that on plenty of occasions. Well, there is nothing but guessing to be done. I took the one horse in here, Lost Lake, that has some experience um, for Graham Motion, and this horse is a half to one turf winner. There is some pedigree, I'm guessing, with this one. There's just not much to go on. You here, don't see much of these. Four and a half on the dirt at Mammoth to eight and a half on the turf at Saratoga. We'll see what uh, Lost Lake does. Obviously, we talked about this downstate up here as well. I always want some, especially going these two turn races, I think a little experience helps. And even though this horse only ran four and a half furlongs on the dirt, like I said, I, leaving this horse out of any kind of multi-race wages is just a foolish thing. She might not be able to run a step on the turf. Like Andy said, she's a half to one st t turf winner, but leaving her out as the only horse in any experience is, is just it's just a foolish thing to do. Uh, I put a third, but yeah, I see where you're so coming from. So you've got Mo, Mo Normal on top? Yeah. Two siblings are over for, for the turf, but the dam was uh, was three for nine on the turf. Clement's on fire. Arado T. Jr. is going to pick up the call. One turf breeze, a ho-hum half mile. Uh, she didn't do much, but Christoph, uh, you know, overall his numbers over the last year and a half on the DRF numbers, his numbers are good. He wins a lot of races with horses debuting at the mile or over, and a, a guy like him, you figure that that's going to happen a lot. On here, it's 20%, 21%, so... Yeah, I just, you know, him, Arad Ortiz Jr., obviously, Christoph's Barn got off to a good start. And I thought the one was a little interesting, Aunt Mary. Uh, the dam was two for six on the turf. This horse is a half to bank it, who it's a dirt horse. did all his dirt running. But at least we know uh, he's done okay going long. So she shouldn't have a problem by Animal Kingdom. A little turf. The dam was a little turf. I thought she might be interesting at a little bit of a price. Um, yeah, it, it's just guessing. My problem with the three Mo Normal is... Christophe's on a big run now. The IRAD, all the IRAD money is cooling off. It's amazing, these fickle fans. IRAD is off to a slow start. Something I, I feel like at this point, maybe they should be betting more on his horses <laughs> because he's due to have a one Break or two out, big right? breakout days. Yeah. It's going to be tough to keep him down, but it's also tough to, to super competitive meet, and guys are riding well. I know this horse take a lot of money, and you're right. The damn one on the turf, but her production has not been good. Now, yesterday we saw that horse that the sec everyone was talking after the race about Todd Fletcher's horse winning where the second dam was Wonder Again. Wonder Again was a wonderful horse. She was a dreadful producer as a broodmare. Nothing. And there was really no production in the turf side. And that was hadn't even won in the dirt. Um, so, you know, it's right, easy after fortunate, the race. A very fortunate Christoph has two in here. I, I've got them third and fourth. Just I'm not going to leave them out. The other one, um, she actually handled the dirt. There isn't much pedigree. I, I don't really have much to say. Actually, the strongest turf pedigree in here, and it's not even close, is, is Stunning Princess. Yeah. Cairo Princes like the turf, and the dams produced four horses to try the turf. Three of them won. Two of them ran buyer figures in the 80s. Now, Danny Gargan's barn's been a little slow, but you want the pedigree horse in this race. This horse is far and away the pedigree, yeah, and Danny can, win with a, can have a, a first-time starter win these races. By a long way. You, know, you said that the other day that, you know, sometimes the firsters are the ones that buck the trends. And... Um, Peachy Queen, she ran well enough. She ran third in her debut, the run happy, so. Wesley sure. Ward has the two, Anna Mua, and he's 0 for 20, I believe, with two-year-old two debuters going long on the turf with only one hitting the board. And believe it or not, this horse is a half to a horse that was so good. Do you know what's so incredible about that the horse is a half to? Well, I know it's Big World, but I don't know what Big it's... Big World is so good that she won a grade one for Tom Amos. So... She may have been one of the greatest horses of all time. I believe she's... So what does that make no parole? One of the greatest horses of all time. Um, the Woody Stevens winner, Tom, in case you forgot. Big World when she first, uh, when oh, she first man. debuted? Uh, you know everything. Tony Dutro. Didn't Tony Dutro trade yeah, Big World? Yeah, there was a Tony Dutro. I Dutrow. believe she won the La Trienne for Tom Amos, right? Believe, yes, must once have, she won must, the La Trienne. Must have been a weak run. Maybe, maybe second or third in the Oaks? Just maybe one of the favorites didn't get out of the gate or something. Maybe both of them or something. <laughs> well, I'm... That's for a guy, <laughs> man, <laughs> how many win how many winners have you trained? About thirty seven hundred less than Tom <laughs> Amos. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> My winning percentage that is around is twenty six points below Tom Amos's career winning percentage as well. That's what I, I thought. I believe that Tom has the highest win percentage of any trainer in history that won over three thousand races, which is I really remarkable. I kid about Tom. I am Tom's biggest fan. Race number four. So. 
we got a maiden that's going to be odds on in race number four. And we'll look at Fresco's last race. And I think it's fair to argue that despite the fact that Fresco has got a lot of hang in her. Is that fair to say? I mean, with, you know, you guys said this on the show that day. She did it one time. Actually, being that I was in the walking to the train watching this. Actually, I watched this in Pat McKenna's car. I didn't say it on the show. But thank you for that. The people on the show, then. Thank you for that. Whoever those. Dude, I was on Red Brand Radio. I, I, I just, I just was just told those about these things. Around. And I'm a bad guy. I was told about this. Um, by I, the way, Talking Horse is brought to you by Saratoga Water. We were a little off center today, and uh, we got the blue bottles and do want to remind people. We'll take a break Stuff's after me five alive up today. Here. Um, I, I am not a fan of maidens in stakes races. That's just not me. Um, I, oh, more um, not guys, I, I sent in a pick change, which obviously wasn't picked up. Um, and I'm sorry for that, but my picks in this race should be 2157. I, I apologize. There was an email sent, though, with a pick change last night. I, um, I, sorry I normally ha borderline harass people that run maidens in stakes races. Aren't her races just, I mean, all three of her races are faster than anything else in here. I, I don't disagree. And she had a wide trip, two back, when she was in against maidens in Florida. And she is way the horse to beat. And to be fair, she was outside against the strong rail. That was the first day we took the rails down. But it was the widener. It wasn't as strong a bias as the inner. Um, but she was off the rail. I'm just a little concerned. And I'm telling you right now, she's going to be, e David's got her even money. I think David would agree. She's she three could to be five. three to five in this race. Um, so the question is, is there somebody else? And there is. And Dixie Cannon. I think that Dixie Cannon, she may just not be good enough. I'm not, and her figures are obviously too low. But last time out, um, she got sort of an odd ride. And do you realize who she was running against last time relative to who she's running against today? Oh, listen. Those are like grade one horses compared. Well, I mean, obviously you don't disagree. You've got her second. Yeah, I mean, she made her three-year-old debut against open company minor stakes horses, <laughs> um, you know, off of a long enough break. I mean, she was gone for eight months, eight and a half months. So, yeah, I mean, I completely respect her, but Andy, she's going to have to really step up if she's going to take on Fresco today. And this is to assume, you know, I'm not even so sure Fresco isn't going to appreciate getting back to the mile on the 16th. I know she ran well last time, but I think I, things got a little too maybe frantic for her on the turn, and she got outgunned by a horse that looks to me like she's going to be a sprinter. And now she gets to go to route again. I, the, the the other field, and look for me, and I'm gonna, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. They're the two by a long, long way in here. I mean, I there is such a drop off to the third horse in here for me anyway. I don't think there are turf horses in yeah. here. I mean, I just especially going long. I mean, Nikki Scissors can take money. I don't even like Nikki Scissors as a horse. There's no turf pedigree that I could find to speak of on this horse. And people are going to bet this horse based on, I don't know what, a sort of phonied up win in late in mid-January when she was allowed to walk around long on the front end going <coughs> six and a half furlongs at Aqueduct. I, I don't see anything to like. And you got to realize this is a stallion series with a big purse. There aren't that many eligible for it, so they're taking a shot of and course, seeing if they're turf horses. To. But from a gambling standpoint, the winner is supposed to be one of the inside, too, and I just thought the two would be a much better price and might not be that bad. I'd have no argument that Fresco's the worst to beat. I certainly would be using both as an A, but I wanted the two Dixie Cannon as a bit of an alternative okay. in here. Yeah. Race number five. Um, there was never any doubt that Anthony would pick, ha had a plan in this race. And, you know, this is how tough the game is. Um, Anthony picked ahead had a plan before they even drew the race. Here's ahead of plans <laughs> debut at Saratoga two this summers ago. Some jokes that lost man. to endorsed, who's a great at stakes horse. Um, the problem with this horse is he can't seem to stay on the racetrack. I mean, yeah. he runs like once a year. He ran well this day. He was with the track, and he didn't have an excuse to lose, except he lost to a very good horse. And then he was wide against a gold rail in his second start in the dirt. And then last time on the turf, he stumbled so badly to start, he probably would have won the race if it didn't happen. But at the end of the day. It's excuse after excuse after excuse. Now they've gelded this horse. And you could and also argue that it's excuse after excuse after excuse, and he's had three races over the course of two years. Right? This will be his fourth race in a little under two years. He's, look, uh, if he, another one like Fresco, and uh, five to two I think is going to be generous if this horse, I don't think this horse is going to go off five to two. I think, uh, I think there's a lot of people that feel more like you do 
that it's been excuse after excuse, and there are other ways to go. Oh, you don't think he'll end. be five to two? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, 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 I think he's going to be very, very short in the year. Five okay. to two is the most he'll be. Actually, a question: If he's seven to two, how confident are you that I'm it's not, not a bad sign? Oh, I'm not. Believe me, but this is by far a strong opinion. Uh, but like I said earlier, when Did I have these races where I have too many questions, I'm defaulting to Chad Brown. In this case, I get Jose Ortiz as a little bit of a bonus as well. So David has instinctive rhythm at 3-1, to one, which leads me to believe that he must hear there's some steam on this horse. Instinctive rhythm, the 7. You've got second. Um, I have fourth. Worked a very impressive 10 flat, the 2-year-old sale, a year ago. Um, they paid an awful lot of money for this horse, 350000 given this horse's pedigree. Yeah, awful the lot of money for the first fold, the dam did no running at no all. No running at all. The second dam was unraced. I didn't look up her progeny, to be fair. But, man, I mean, and the other thing that worries me is George Weaver had a tremendous meet at Belmont. His horses did not run the first week. It's one weekend of the meet. Right, He's done great up days. here in the past, but... He's had some live horses that have not delivered. Would you disagree with that? No, not at all. But you see the 47 from the gate, the 59 from the pole. 59 and 1, I should say, from the pole. Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, again, they paid a lot of money for this horse as a tapature. 350, I think he stands for 7,500. Stands for 7,500. So somebody likes something here. You mentioned the two-year-old work. His three-year-old works now. Uh, you know, and that always worries me. I mean, you see a horse not debuting until almost August of his three-year-old year with that kind of price tag, who was that impressive at the sales. Obviously, O Trouble is a logical horse. Ran well, and Happy Saver, the horse that beat O Trouble, if you're not familiar, was a Todd Pletcher that ran a hole in the wind first time out. Looking, that horse will be a short price to non winners of one, I would imagine, at some point this meet. But you speak of Todd Pletcher, I think I put up the trainer stat for Irish Front in this race, if I can find it, there find it is. my pages. Um, this horse has exceptional, Todd, Todd has exceptional. Now, they're not as good at Naira, even though they won a race this last year, but. Uh, he has terrific numbers, and I went in this direction. Now, that was a seemingly live race, Famish, Bella Avia, who I think only ran one or two more times. Some other horses ran okay. I'm going to hope this is a horse that ran well first time that Todd will have ready to go and been pointing to Saratoga. He seems to have won with these horses in the past, and this horse won't be a super short price. So I thought this horse was an interesting alternative. If the paper holds up, his only problem might be having to deal with the likes of O Trouble, who's down inside, maybe even New Frontier. Who well, he's got a lot of speed, New Frontier. He just doesn't win. Yeah, there's a lot. And there's, you know, the speed suit was inside, so maybe well, Arad can get the source off the pace. should also point out with New Frontier, he was involved in a wicked, wicked pace last time out. He was. Race number six. We'll talk about that as it kick off the late pick five. Is it good, Steve? We can take a quick break. Quick break to hear from our sponsor at Saratoga Water. For almost 150 years, the Saratoga name has been synonymous with the finest quality, sustainably sourced spring water available anywhere. Saratoga carries on the rich tradition of its forefathers by crafting each stunning blue glass bottle with the same attention to detail and care that has been its hallmark for generations. Visit saratogaspringwater.com today or ask for us by name at your local market or restaurant. Saratoga Spring Water. Make every day exquisite. Coming back. Welcome back to Talking Horses. He's Anthony Stabile. He's Andy Sarlin. I'm not. Race number six will end the early pick five and pick four and kick off the late pick five. The we saw quite race. a sequence yesterday in that and tough. And I, I took a nice beat in the second I hit it way. twice. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I celebrated. Um, Saratoga water and uh, gin for you? What would it be? I'd be a Saratoga. I'd, I'd find some sort of vodka with the Saratoga water. So let's talk about Ballon Rose. And we'll look at a race where Ballon Rose finished second in maiden race behind another Chad Brown or Shelter Island, a Peter Brandt first time starter that won. Um, and Kelly Can Run was third. No question that, Ke that Ballon Rose got in some traffic on the inside last time. I don't know if she was going anywhere. Um, in there, she has been an overbet, massive disappointment throughout her career, and I just don't want this Chad Brown run at a short price. And honestly, I look at Kelly can run, and my general feeling is, um, is that Kelly can run is can run. And as you know, I've I've liked this horse for a while. I think she fits perfectly fine in here, 
and she's five to one morning line, and Bell and Rose is eight to five. And what is wrong with Kelly can run? And why can't she win? Because I just don't like anybody in here, Anthony. I found this race excruciatingly. Different. I feel like anyone can win. I don't like your horse at all, but thank you. I'm not no, but I'm not going to be shocked if she wins. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you probably don't really like my horse, but are you going to fall in your chair if she wins? No. You know, you want to really make a big stand and no. say, you know, I hate this horse. It can't possibly win. No. There's not a horse in this race you could say that about. But I don't want Bow and Rose, I mean, at 8 to 5. She's just been a massive. And, and Chad Brown is a horse like this that's lost at 35 cents a dollar, 9 to 5, even money. She won at 6 to 5 on the best part of the racetrack, 9 to 5. She just loses at short prices, and she's just been an underachiever. She had an excuse last time. I mean, last she time did, was but an Do you think she was going to win? I don't know. That's the problem. Yeah. The problem is when you, you if you want to bet a horse off a trip, you better be sure they were going to win that race you're betting them off of. That's how I feel about when guys and gals bet on bad trips. I feel like you can make a you can you can you, you can watch a race and find a lot of bad trips. You better be betting a horse thinking they should have won off that trip last time. And I I, right. I don't You're, know. You want a short price based no. on a horse that maybe would have been you know she would have been closer. But especially I, when you look at the PPs right. and see that and, and Kelly the can, odds are she wasn't going to win Kelly that race last time. Kelly can run betting on a horse that's got fast enough races to win is going to be a solid price. So yeah. for me that's good enough as I go the field because. I can't bet Bariqua. I can't obviously bet Bariqua. Obviously, Bariqua will win this she race. She steamroll this field, I, I, and I'm going to use her in the pick five. She was awful last time out, and I just can't trust her form. Her obviously, last, she can win. Her last race is troubling. Her I last worry race about is pure wow wiring the field. How's that? That's how insane I am looking at this race. I and I, you can't I, like her on paper, but John Terranova, I remember he had a long shot. I think finished second in one of these races or wanted a big price going a mile on the turf that just was the speed, but you couldn't really make on paper. So I don't want to be totally dismissive of her. Didn't, didn't the Philly just get beat last year to uh, 55 doing that? Wish upon? Got loose on the lead, too. But there was another one, a few, another years one ago. a few years ago. Should ask yeah. John. He'll remember. I should text him. I won't be surprised. And joyous times. I was able to set a slow pace, which is not supposed to happen with pure wow in here, right? right. I won't be surprised, though. I, and I won't be surprised if pure wow was kind of taken out of the game by joyous oh. times who could put a little pressure on. I thought you had kitten by the sea on top. No, no, no. Okay. I so talk about simplicity, top. and then we'll show them the dreaded trainer stats. Yeah, this, this, I know the stats aren't well, because the year and a half stats, are ter the, these stats I have here aren't very good. But the barn's going well. He's get, she's getting LASIK for the first time. She's getting my man, Joel Rosario. They're very eager to show you this stuff. I'm taking, uh, look. You're taking the worst like, of it. I'm, look at these stats. I, look the sta at this stat. I know stat. the stats aren't good. I think, you know, I think you People really. People think because Christophe Clement is French that he's good with Europeans. <laughs> and you, <laughs> Christophe, this guy calls you a friend. Look at this stat he puts up. I love Christophe. He's one of my favorite people. That's why I make so much fun of him. If I didn't like Christophe, I would never make fun of him. I, I love Christophe. Listen, I, 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 I know, I know, this is this this horse kind of has sucker written all over. I, I know. I know. You she don't does. want anybody in here. I know there, she does. There, there's no killers. And, and I listen, feel like I'm raising. Right. I feel like I've been I may fouled. be a sucker for throwing her out though, because you're right. You know, he has bad numbers, but you know. But the thing is, I know she ran against some decent horses. I just feel like she's going to be three to one by. The process of elimination. And, and there I are other three to ones, four to one shots that you won. That's fine. How about Kitten by the Sea? I thought there was a chance that you would pick Kitten by the Sea in this race. We'll I take a, a look nice at her replay. I'll tell you what, I made a nice bet on her this day. I, I will say one thing. This figure holds up. I don't know where it came from, but it holds up. She got loosey goosey on a fight. But final. it holds Rod up the fig, her, and it's but I, I, with all due respect to Todd Fletcher. I don't want to, to claim horses from Mike Maker on the turf. Yeah, you could, right. That's the kind of claim. Oh, by the way, Todd did not claim this horse. Jorge Navarro, who's currently under indictment for performance enhancing drugs, claimed this horse. Yeah. So Todd's got this horse. Yeah, I can imagine Michael Todd. Would, right. Well, you, I mean, it, th and those are kind of the th you don't want to see a horse claimed from Maker. You don't want to see a horse claimed from Pletcher. And it doesn't kind of. I don't think it matters if they it's claim just him from. Not supposed I just, to get the lead. And a big difference in turf courses. But listen, she did run a legitimately fast fig last time. And who knows? Maybe she's just improving. This she is looked, a tricky race. She looked race. like a zillion dollars. I remember betting her based on her looks. It was like a coin flip so situation. Anthony, so do you. She you, look, you look like a million. I, I always wanna, look good. I want to get that in there. You look like a million well, dollars. I look like a million. You even got the thing clipped on finally. You know how annoying it was looking at that thing not clipped on? Well, Andrew came over and said he needs some Andrew's help. I said, like, yes. I thought he clipped it on and the thing was flapping on my ear. I mean, Andrew takes care of the two of us. I feel like the Iron Sheet cameraman. Zoom up. Race number seven. Um, JC Shooting Star, I wanted to bet her. She's running on Saturday. You know, I got, I got nothing but love for JC Shooting Star. You know, there are meetings for, for that, right? <laughs> 
There's You're like no, addicted to there's her. There's no help for you anything. You are addicted she to her. She is such if, a cool horse. If Dennis Lauman ever claimed JC shooting star, you... <laughs> Greatest moment. <laughs> I'd need a new partner for talking horses the next day. You'd be out cold. You would be zonked out. If it wasn't for Dennis Lalman. <laughs> Race number seven. You and I took Fierce Lady. Let's take a look at Fierce Lady winning the secret, Seek in the Ante last year. And I think the question with her is whether or not Rudy Rodriguez can resurrect a horse that was very good to begin her career. Yeah, if she can find this form from last year, I mean, her two-year-old numbers will beat these older horses. And there's no way around that now. You assume that they're going to get a little better, and maybe she didn't take the step forward. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping Rudy wakes her up. I am. Joel Rosario's going to ride for the first time. She's won from, she has plenty of speed. She has won from off the pace, though, which is going to uh, certainly help her cause in here because there's some speed signed on in this race. There is, but... You know, there is, well, it's actually still in there because the speed yeah. is towards the outside. It's on the outside. But I'm going to tell you something. Are you going to be shocked if Bertrand is a, a, not effective in this race? You know, Fierce Lady did rate to win. That's why I showed the Seek in the Ante. She can do it. And I don't think Joel's going to gun into a speed duel, but on this racetrack, we'll see. I know Bertrand, you know, people are going to look and go, oh, she's a little cheap. She is in raging form in the Cantor Mossy barn. They do great work. Here's the big. Here's, here's the thing. The, here's the thing. I'm gonna give it to you. The big thing. Here's the big here's thing. The big thing. <laughs> here's, here's the big thing. The <laughs> money that's gonna come in on Bertranda off of the rider change. Oh, the Irad, yeah. Is kind yeah, 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 is yeah, going yeah. to like a tidal wave. Real, yeah. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's gonna be enormous, and you're gonna lose some of your perceived value with her because anything stepping up against the allowance, any kind of price you were gonna get is going to be completely negated. I had her negated. fourth. I scratched into her as my second Double, pick. Yeah, I, I, I like the race 310 it, well, um, just because I think they're going to be the ones. And again, you, you, you're starting to take the racetrack into account a little bit. We have to move bit. along. But let me say, I agree, but let me say, Rotrana, she's run very well. When she's Busted the Flees beat her, she got a perfect trip to beat her in a head, Bob. Now, last time was kind of a weird race because they rode her for second. They sat in time of tradition. Followed it was a super them. slow yep. pace. They didn't get aggressive. She got it. But we'll see. We'll see how fast it is. I, I don't want to discount Cartwheel for Mark Hennig. Saw Mark last night. Does that count? They were leaving no. as I was coming in. I saw Singular Sensation yesterday afternoon. That counted. I don't think either one of us should do a lot of bragging about our performance yesterday. But you just got in here and bragged about a two-to-one two shot. That I told people was a kick. In I the had pants. the only good pick all day in no, no, two days of miss. I hope two days Colleen or Kaka pick. could tell me today that there's a two to one shot that's a kick in the pants. That's what I hope. That's what I hope. And I don't do that, but that's what I hope. When people get annoyed that I abuse the big A, think back to him caval crowing about picking a two to one shot. What on do you want day to talk about Vietnam? You want to talk about speak to me a summer, fourteen and eleven? Who else you want to talk about? Five best bets, five one, Andy. Dude, Come on. When you go 0 for five days in a row, come to me. it's going to get ugly. That's fine. All right. That's fine. Just remember, I bragging when you pick winners. I deserve it. It I comes back it. to haunt you at the racetrack. Race it. number eight. <laughs> um, race number eight is a very, very tricky race. And you've defaulted to a horse in French Reef that I think is problematic for Chad Brown because the horse obviously couldn't get the mile at, at Aqueduct. But at Saratoga, it's five and a half or a mile. And I wonder if five and a half is a little bit short for a horse that's just going to be too short a price for me to put on top. I feel like they kind of missed this in the running line, too. This was a little rank last time. Remember? I remember Chad Brown telling me before the horse ran last time, I'm a little worried the distance could be too far for this horse. But now you wonder if, and I haven't spoken to him about this horse. You should speak. You're friends with Louis Lazaneros, the part owner. What does Louis I'll think? I'll be at Nova tonight. Well? I think that says enough. Well, that's why you picked it. No, that's not why I picked it. I'll be at Nove tonight. I think that speaks for the chances of French Reef today. What does that mean? What, are you speaking in code? <laughs> Spit it out, Anthony. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm assuming there'll be a celebration at Nove tonight. Do you really think that Louis is not going to have a nice dinner if the horse no. doesn't win? Okay. We so always eat and drink well. Ridiculous. But it's, it's just more of a good, there'll be some Jimmy Roselli on the radio. It's a, it's a, different, kind of, it's a different kind of mood, Andy. You think it's easy being me? It's hard enough it's being me being, being me, but with Hold this on. nonsense going on here. Easy being you. We have our audience today. Okay, I think back. this horse is the kind of horse that can win, but it's going to be an over bet in what's a much trickier race. Now, I know it's a wrap's going to take money and probably should, but I want to show it's a wrap's last race because I think this race, <laughs> that's my Roxy girl. But, guys, we love being at the Big A. 
Um, it's a wrap. It's actually a nice race. Girl. Nah, the boys are doing a tremendous job in the truck. But my Roxy girl was scratched out of race number seven. It's a wrap. We'll try to get to that video at some point. Um, closed into a race. You know, Uncle George, I know this nitwit and here's who it's a wrap. went on Talking Horses when I wasn't there and talked up Uncle George negating to mention, pretending he ran super in here, negating to mention that there was a complete pace meltdown in this race, and he watched Uncle George at a short price, and yes, you deserve this, run nowhere when he was a horse that most handicappers were betting against that day. Just not, trip that just day? not you. That ride? Doesn't matter. He was no, a terrible bet matter. the no, next no, time no, he ran, is. because like it's a wrap, he took advantage of a pace that fell apart. And I thought this might be a tougher field today. I agree. I agree. There's... Uh and, and the distance, I think, would obviously affect this horse as well, right? Going to lose some ground here from the six to the five and a half. Uh, you did, like you mentioned, twice now. The pace did collapse that day. Ethos, the yeah. horse that I have on top and you have second. You know, this horse ran in what looked like a good maiden race first time out. Is a half to two turf winners. It's from a family of horses, Stuart Janney. There's plenty of turf second generation. And I took a shot at Ethos, maybe for Jimmy Jerkins. I cut a couple of Jimmy Jerkins horses in a row. Can get it going, both of them for Centennial Farm. I took it as an alternative. But I think there's a very dangerous horse that needs to be mentioned here. And that's Call Home was going to be the speed in here. This horse got involved. If, like me, you don't like it's a wrap because the pace fell apart. You have to like you this horse. You must get involved in the horse that was in the pace last time, and he should have a better pace scenario today. So Call Home is a horse I'll be using who ran a lot better than his Easton thing. Anthony couldn't pick him because he hates Ray I Handel. I just worry about it going five and a half furlongs if this horse is going to that terrible trainer, training. Ray Handel. Yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> we're not training going right. five and a half. Ray can only right. get him for four and a half. Four and a half. Uh, five tops. Five's I agree with Ray. That was a very Ray. annoying beat we both took with his horse the other day. It ran yeah, great. He, he just had, ran into that, that monster of Steve Asmussen. He had he had that horse ready to roll that day. Yeah, he ran great, but he yeah, just... He, know, had, he had Bingster ready to roll that day. fighting with that horse, too. Race that number nine. Okay. It's like a mini stake race. And we'll talk about it's Captain Scotty. Um, you've got Captain Scotty in here, who just three starts ago... Won a grade two, and now you can claim this horse for 80000 off a bad effort on the turf, and the horses run okay on the turf. I don't trust this horse at all for Peter Miller, but obviously he can win. I want very little to do with this horse today. He the wants nothing to do with win. you, Anthony, but he's going to be in front. That's fine. He's going to be in front. I have to think Admiral Lynch is going to be busting his chops as best he can on the front end. I agree. Um, and, you know, he's done that now twice. You worry about the Jason Service. Jason Service only had this horse for one start. Mike Maker had him for his last two. This horse ran really, really well both times. I bet him last time at Churchill Downs. Absolutely, Aiden got, in, Aiden got in front of him, and he just couldn't pick him up late in the game. Um, but I would, I have to think the three and six are going to keep each other company on the front the end. Six is fast. Six is fast. The six is fast. But again, so is the three, but the six is fast. Again, he was involved in that wicked pace in the turf. He's so fast that he's able to be involved with well able. He's an absolute bull. Rad's watching these replays and watching these races, and Rad knows that if this track's the same way, he can't give up too much position, especially inside. No, no, he's got to go with this. Race. He's got to go. I agree. So you and won't, let me just also point hit. out six and a half furlongs for the long run up. You'll see fast paces. When you see twenty one and four here, they're not really going that fast right. if you see 21 and 1 they're moving they're moving 21 and 3 is neutral for these kind of quality horses and they're good horses i knew that anthony would pick honest mischief and i'm going to tell you something he might win today but i'm done okay i thought this horse was going to be good and he's been a disappointment here he is winning the city of laurel and obviously he wasn't beating volatile last time he better win today. I don't. I think he's going to be a short price and i don't believe on paper he deserves to be in here he gets beaten his debut his next three losses come in the Woody Stevens in the third start of his career when he was buried down along the inside well, and got beat just three rail. No, no, he got a terrible trip in the Woody Stevens. And he had a terrible trip, well. okay? He wasn't buried in the inside. Amsterdam, he ran into Chance a lot and whatever. He was I ganged know. up with that day. I, I know, and but... volatile last time. Careful. I mean, he's supposed to get a great trip in here. He gets his regular rider back. Not that Tyler gave him a great ride last time. I mean, Tyler ran into a bus all last time. But he gets his regular rider back. He's supposed to work out the right trip. He's just not that good. I don't know if he's not that good. I he's 8-5 to five morning line. Do you really think his PPs justify 8-5? to Because if you do, we're going to have to agree to disagree and move no, on. No, but do you think David's just making him 8-5 to five up the morning line? You see the guy that trains him, this Chad Brown guy? 
He's win some races. He's going to take this one's yeah, going to take I, more money. I, I said he's eight to five morning line for a reason. Right. I don't think he any he should be eight to five based on his PPs. I agree with David. He's going to be short, and part of the reason is Chad Brown. At the end of the day, I think even Chad will tell you this is a pivotal race for him. He has been a disappointment. I don't. I don't disagree. It's a pivotal yeah, race. I think he's I don't a, he's a, he's but a, I don't know. I think disappointment's a strong word. I think disappointment is a will strong agree word. To disagree Who is going to be chance will that agree day, to Andy? disagree and move on. I think Mios is a sprinter, and I've always felt he was a one-turn type closing horse. It, simply, if Mios runs his race two back, and what was he doing in the slop, and this is it, I think he's going to win this race. He may. You could argue that, that Tyler probably moved too soon with him. He just ran by this field. I think Mios is going to run very, very well today. He did. Here's my issue with Mios. I don't disagree that he's a sprinter, but I think he won that race facing a horse in sniper shot who might not be a sprinter. He may want the one turn. He's not mile. a bad horse. He's not, I'm no, going to disagree with you. I'm going to disagree. Bad horse. I just think we'll, maybe we'll, he we'll, had the edge of it. We'll agree Listen, to disagree. You did second. pick him second. I got um, him second. Wendell Fong, I think, is very dangerous. And my friend Nick Tamaro made an interesting point about Wendell Fong. Jeremiah Engelhart was horse we're running. He was a little cold at Oakland. And this horse still ran well for him ran in some really very well. tough spots. Look who we ran against. Um, We'll see. Robertino Diodoro starting off a little bit on the chilly side here. He's run some closers on a track that's been kind of speed, um, and he's not going to be far off it. And I'm not convinced that Wendell Fong isn't pretty good. I'm using one and five. He's here. not going to be far off it, and if we're right, he's inside. Yeah. And I, that could I, be a I, big, I, big edge for this horse. That extra half furlong. You know, th the other thing in here, the six and a half, that, to me, in a race like this where there are two horses that look like they're going to be fighting for the lead. That extra half furlong really helps horses like Wendell Fong. He's the third horse for me. That I'll have a ticket where I, I'll have a pick five ticket that he's on because he's the horse that probably will be the best value. I think Captain Scotty will be shorter than Wendell Fong just based on the fact didn't, that he's fast and it's Peter. It's didn't Fong raise on when the tail of the cat here last year? He did. I think honest. I think honest mischief is the reason you're supposed to play. He can win, but he's going to be over bet. Anthony disagrees. Race number ten. We'll take a look at st financial stability. Breaking his maiden here last year. I'm going to tell you my problem with this drop down. This horse might be one that is not thrilled with a wet track, and I don't think. And Al Gold had enough. He just walked away. Al's done. He you wanted to hear about Wendell Fong. You drove him away. You drove he him away. He wanted to hear about Wendell Fong. I'm going to stick with my story that you drove him away. I feel like this is a give up on a horse that maybe deserved another chance on a dry track. And if you look at Chad Brown's numbers, first time for a tag in the dirt, Cerdo, he's 6 for 14 with a dollar seventy-seven ROI. They win, but you got to use them in your, your gimmicks, but you're not really taking the worst of it trying to beat them. And he's 4 for 9 for Klarovich in that five-year period um, with four of them running second. But it's dollar fifty-two ROI, and they've been horses that gotten claimed, like take it to scale in the first race, that haven't gone on and done anything special on the race. Well, track. there it is, right? What? So you wonder <coughs> where is he going to go? This drop down is more because Chad knows this is a horse that's better on a dry track, probably, and he's just. Well, where are they going to go with him, Andy? I, I get it. Right? He's a five-year-old gelding. Enough. Time to move on. Right, you're going to run, run him for the quarter or the forty. Well, in you the can run him in a no. You can run him in New York Red Honors or one. Okay, but. The, the straight A of it ends going up here, or are they make him, or they add in the optional tag, and then you got to run into Tribeca. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, oh. He's there's no aren't way. Those, aren't those <clears throat> twos? I, those are twos, I think, Anthony. Those are twos. Okay. I don't. I was about to say that great you made point. a great point, but I'm yeah, going to say I can't remember. I'm you might have made a, a terrible point. I can't remember if we ran. straight I'm going to guess we run straight one A's. They're not going to okay. put those, make those they horses did run. Last, well, I thought mine the coin was the other horse. Unfortunately, scratch, but. Actually, I think Deputy Flag is. He's got no turf pedigree. He's not a turf horse. Isn't isn't he a dangerous horse to wire the field for Brad Cox? I know he doesn't ever win, but yeah, you I don't guess. have him anywhere. Uh, I, Cl I mean, Cl I clear speed on this racetrack. Yeah, I probably should have put him. Were you still at Nove or something, having your third Anazette? And I was not at Nove last night. the Andy. boys. Oh, you handicapped this last night. I was home last night. You had your picks up like on Monday. Picks are all done, bro. The whole weekend's done until Sunday. What, you're, you're so embarrassed that you left the three out that you're going to hope that this ghost goes away? You've got continuing. I just told you I probably should have had him on a board. But when I did the races earlier in the week, over the weekend. What's the excuse? I should have updated. The people. I should have updated. I'm using the three, everyone. Apologize. To, apologize to the people. To my dear fans. Both of them. <laughs> Both of them deserve an apology. To have to I don't know what to do with continuum. 
He got left last time. He broke a length slow, the six. I'm using I don't know if he's I'm just, he is who he is. Break. He still ran his figure. I don't know. Ten-month break. Smithson puts them where they belong. Let, They're let, having a good start to the meet. I, I thought it was a two-horse race. You're right about Deputy Flag because of the way the track's and the two-horse race between 11 But again, six-and-a-half furlongs. He's got to get six-and-a-half. He broke his main at five-and-a-half, and he's had trouble sustaining it. You know what? You're talking me into something I talked myself out of. This horse won't go in five-and-a-half furlongs. He's had distance problems. Oh. Deputy flag. All things, I I'm all things Anthony apparently never I thought rescind. about when he completely dismissed him from the top I four. No, I had um, here, as far as mandatory half. payout in this race, I know he's one for 20. Be careful with that six wide upper. He was six wide upper. That is not inaccurate. That was a gold rail day on the, tr on the main track, but he was on the rail until they entered the stretch. Swung so deep. Jose actually saved ground for two thirds of the running of that race before angling out, even more so. So he did have the best of it for a while in that race. So his running line, it was okay, but he doesn't win. Yeah, he doesn't win. He doesn't have any, he, more importantly, he has zero speed. Unlike Deputy Flag, and it, who's and gonna and be loose on the lead here, has some speed too. Yeah. All right, you good? I'm a little, I'm a little famished. I didn't forgot to have breakfast this morning. I was too busy. Had some cornflakes. You didn't I have like, I, and I think of that. I think of that old John Belushi thing on Saturday, lucky I didn't go to Saturday Night Live when You're John Belushi eating morning. little chocolate donuts. I had to pick up a hitchhiker you know? on the side of the road this I, morning I see as well. you doing that. If you smoked like Belushi did in that ad, you could be eating a little chocolate lucky donuts for breakfast. breakfast of champions. I was able to pick up a hitchhiker on the side of the road this morning. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Me. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> Head over to Naira Bets for a great point. If you're not a member of Naira Bets, bet we will match up to a $200, $200 of your deposit. Uh, use promo code SPA, Naira Bets, and follow Naira Bets on Twitter. Please follow Naira Bets on Twitter. Through the app only, a $2,000 hit and split on all the people that through the app hit the late pick five at Saratoga. Remember, if you were yesterday, you'd probably got that bonus if you were the only winner. You, you got two it winners, all. right? You two got $1,000 if you played right? through Naira Bets, yep. Details at NairaBets.com also. Naira.com backslash challenge. Every Sunday at Saratoga, we'll have a $250 buy-in, all cash prizes. Naira bets only yet another reason to be a member of Naira bets and also information on the contest as well. You can follow along on at Naira bets on Twitter. Once again, one to six today, Saratoga Live. Watch it all summer. Watch. What is it? Listen, learn, enjoy. I don't know. You know who you can enjoy? My main man, John Imbrial, the voice of the New York Racing Association. He's up next with a reprise of the scratches and the changes. Hello racing fans and once again welcome to Saratoga. We've got a mix of sun and clouds. The temperature will be around 80 degrees. The main track is fast. The turf courses are firm. Portable rail up on the melon at 12 feet and on the inner at 9 feet. There's a jackpot carryover in the Empire Six. $304,723. Here now, today's changes. The first race is the Grade 1 AP Smithwick Memorial. Steeplechase race at 2 miles and a 16th. Scratch number 1, Belisarius. Scratch the 1. A rider change on the 2, Prava Laguna to Bernard Dalton. Bernard Dalton will ride the 2. And note that number 9, Radician, wears a hood. In the second race,